It seems as though the old man and I have found ourselves in a bit of a predicament. We both ended up swiping right on this particular match made in heaven, BMW's latest S1000XR touring package. This cunning motorcycle definitely wasn't shy of having us both for a double date. So out of respect, I let the old man enjoy his ride first by soaking up the bumps and crumps of our shitty tarmac highway roads. How exciting. But comfort and luxury clearly wasn't an issue for the old man, as the XR packs many pleasurables to be desired for a sports touring fanatic. Electronic suspension that adjusts and adapts to the road surface at a blink of an eye. A three-level heated hand grip system that could weld your hands to the bar's grips on the highest setting. A turtle speed and rabbit speed windshield. A must-have cruise control system. Critter bodies, cornering lights, and many more extras. Its outward form, you could say, resembles to that of a yellow jacket wasp, but in red. And much to its sexy, aggressive styling, the ride itself adds up to its subtle rage. By sticking your hand into the forbidden lolly jar of dynamic pro mode, the sugar rush kicks in. Woo! That gets a heart racing. It really does make the riding experience of the S1000XR that much sweeter. Holding my line, nice and easy, easy to manoeuvre. From about 6000 RPM onwards, that's where all the joy is. My god, just wants to keep revving. It's a screaming banshee when you get it right up into the rev range. Coming out of the corner. Wowzers. Much better to allow the engine to rev, get the revs up a bit, and it's a whole different power delivery. In third gear, it's nice through the corners, just cruising. Drop it down to second, the motor comes alive, and you've got to hang on, because it's fast. Yep, if this bike doesn't lift your heart rate, you haven't got one. Pushing power delivery to the side, blipping through the gears was an easy task. It's like pressing on a soft sponge followed by a positive click at the end, and can be quite contagious when using the quick shifter to your advantage. Quick shifter. Quick shifter. <laughs> Down the quick shifter. Turn in the corner. Up and down blipper. Piece of cake. It is the best thing since sliced bread. Quick shift is very smooth. Very light gearbox. Handling is, is amazing. These wide bars enable you to tip into corners effortless. Very confidence inspiring. It's one of those bikes you, you don't have to hang off the seat, put a knee down to make a turn. You can sit quite upright and just push on the bars. Counter steering is, is simple as. There's no wallow, there's no um, movement. The bike just holds line perfectly. Brakes are as, as you'd expect. Very, very good feel, very powerful. And that they are. Pat the dog too hard and it will surely bite. So caress it gently as you go for the touch on the lever. There's no dog warning sticker found in this household. Whoa, yeah, she pulls up. <laughs> Funny, that wasn't even full pressure. Holy crap. Nice feel through the brakes. Well, it's not diving on me, I should say. You don't feel like the front end's just gonna squat and turn to shit. Cool. <laughs> that is so good. I love the fact that the collector is between the foot peg and the gear selector. The collector's right there, easy to get to. Every other manufacturer needs to pay attention to that. Wowzers, that is awesome. Whew. S1000 
XR, I call it extremely rideable. It is, yeah, it is, <laughs> it, it, yes. You can get this thing over harder than what we took it today, a lot harder. Yeah, yeah. And these Metzler Rotec tires, highly recommend them, they are great. Yeah, they hold the road really well, they look like they'd be good in the wet too. We are lucky it didn't rain today, a few spits on the way home, but nothing much. Mm. Uh, and talking about clearance, how far are the pegs off the road when you lean the thing over? It's <laughs> yeah. good. Having the extra height is a, is a big benefit. You, you never feel like your pegs are going to drag on the road, that's for sure. I also like sitting up high. In traffic, it gives you good visibility. Um, it's, it's a great riding position. You, you're sitting very upright, nice wide bars. The reach to the bars is just spot on. And the GPS mount doesn't intrude your vision either. So, yes, it is sitting quite high, but while you're riding, don't even notice it's there. Now, what's it like standing up? It's right there. 173 centimetres tall. I am slightly leaning over the bars a little bit, standing up on the bike. So if my legs get crammed up, I'm not going to be too hunched over if I need to stand. Now, I really have no initial complaints on this bike. The vibrating mirrors are no longer there. How good is that? That was such a big problem with the previous model. You'd be riding on the highway and the mirrors are just doing this. You don't know what the hell's behind you. Mr. Mr. Poo Poo could be behind you for you know, and you're just taking off and then whoop whoop, here come the police. So, yeah, those mirrors are excellent. I can see really well through those mirrors. I love the fact that you're actually sitting in the bike, not on top of it. I feel like I have a better feel for the ride. When you're sitting in it, you just feel like you're one with the bike. I know it sounds weird to say, but it's pretty good. Now the seat is cut in a little bit more and it's got this arch on the back, but I'm glad it's got it because when you roll on that throttle just over 6,000 RPM, it holds you in the position. So you're not going to freak out and feel like your body's going to be flapping in the wind. So <laughs> yeah, I personally, love the seat yeah others have said otherwise yeah which i can understand great. why because it does where it cuts in it's a bit concave so if you're someone who's let's say plumptious you might find the uh seat to be a little bit uncomfortable i think too when you initially sit on it you think it's a bit hard but time tells and sitting in it for some time it was it was good you can get comfort seats for these bikes that is an option um so no problem there if you feel like the seat is a little bit too hard for your tuchus so yeah whole lot of extras that they've chucked onto this and also the center stand tell me about that center yeah, stand yeah yeah it's so easy to use you get the bike up on the center stand effortless um one of the easiest bikes i've ever got up on the center stand and getting it off as well it's great works extremely well uh, and it doesn't stick out on the side too far it's really good no no yeah. well it's Got plenty of clearance there, so mm. there's no worry about scraping that uh, center stand when you're taking those corners. You can get panniers for these. Apparently a, a, a full face helmet fits in the, um, the panniers, um, the side ones, not sure about the back box. Also the previous model used to have a frame that hung down here, looked very ordinary. Now they just clip in the top, which is much, much better. Um, I have heard with some of the side pannier boxes, depending what size you get, you might run into the issue of hitting them with your foot, so you might want to work on your yoga skills to get around that. Uh, yet to test out the lights, I will test them out tonight and see how bright they are. Go for a night ride, shall we? Let's see how good these spotlights are. Now as for the high beam, I'm sure what we're going to get is a beam of light, a narrow beam of light that's going to shoot straight ahead. Oh no, now we've got good spread on the high beam. Excellent. That's cool. That's the problem I was facing with a lot of uh, modern day sports spikes or bikes in general. Uh, the high beam with the LED lights is next to bloody useless, whereas a high beam on this does the job. We're spitting a bit. Hmm, time to put it in rain mode. Here we go. This will tell me the difference between the two. A bit hard to find the switches at night. I must say, it would be nice if they illuminated. But how often are you going to ride at night? Rarely. I want to quickly go through Old West Mount Cotton Road. Now, I've got to be careful because it is wallaby territory through there. I don't want them kanga waller foxes jumping out of me. So I will take it easy. I'm not going to be hooking it through the corners. So I apologize if it's a little bit boring. That high beam's excellent very good 
Okay, turn the spotties on. There we go. Wow. Nice. Now before some of you warriors start smashing the keyboard with your face, the GoPro's footage doesn't quite serve it justice on your screen. But the spotlights are what you'd expect, bloody bright. With good ambient light, you'll have no problem spotting a majestic Kangaroo Walla Fox or Seven. Now as for the cornering lights, they do the job but nothing really to brag about. And FYI, the cornering light feature is only available to the touring spec, but I honestly wouldn't cry over it. It's an all round, almost perfect bike. There yeah. are some pet peds that we weren't too, I don't know. A bit minor though, they're all, they're only minor, minor things. The, the biggest thing that we both noticed was uh, it's got this hill start assist, the brakes come on. Now with this engine, you really have no power under 2000 revs. No. So if the brakes are on, and the only way to release the brakes is to move forward, I find you're riding the clutch that little bit too much, well more than I would like, before the brake starts to let go and let you go forward. It's a good thing it holds the bike from going backwards, but I stalled it twice because it doesn't just pull away. I'm not a big fan of that either. I like a bike to just pull away easy at low revs, but you'd get used to it in no time. It's 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 not a biggie, it's not a biggie. No, no. Where BMW could make an improvement on that is with the brakes having a double tap system like Triumph has with their Rocket 3. So if you want to engage that hill start, give it a double tap. I think that's what this, or what BMW should do for their hill start controls. Cause yeah, it is quite tedious. You, it feels to me when you're trying to take off, you're not getting that grab as you would with a clutch when taking off on a hill, you feel that momentum forward. It's very foreign to me when trying to take off. So you've really got to look down at your gauge, make sure it's past 2000 RPM and then away you go. Another strange thing I thought, when you put the dash up first, before you start scrolling through any information, there's no fuel gauge. The fuel gauge doesn't show. You've got your, your speed, which is great, easy to see. The taco is easy to see. The, the gear light is easy to see. Everything, time, everything's great. But there's no fuel gauge. So at a glance, you don't know how much fuel you've got. Um, a minor thing, you flick through, you scroll, and it comes up, and you soon work it out. Yeah, and it tells you how many kilometres you have left. How many k's you've got left, which is a good thing, but um, I'd like to see a, a, a fuel gauge. There probably is a fuel gauge on here, we're just but you yet to find, find it. it. <laughs> you've got to find it, yeah. So to get into your riding modes, you've got to press your mode button on the right here. So we have rain mode, road, dynamic. Now to get into dynamic pro, or essentially sports, you've got to toggle down on the menu button there, Press down again to engage your sports, and there you go. There it is. Pretty cool. I love the layout of the Dynamic Pro. So it tells you what lean angle you've been taking, how much pressure you've been um, applying onto the brake, how much the traction control is engaging with you, and it saves those options where you've been using it at its max, which is really cool to see. It's so easy to see. It's huge, isn't it? It's lovely. Mm. Oh, yeah, massive the screen. Yeah. Love it. Beautiful. Blind as that. And you yeah, I read it easy. <laughs> For me, looks wise, Great. this far exceeds the previous model. Everything is in line and shape. I wasn't a big fan of the old angry pirate look from the uh, previous yeah, XR. Yeah, one eye. Yeah, yeah, I don't know why makers do that. It looked like it had a bit of a stroke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> These have the new slim headlights, better design, the whole styling's good. And how good is that standard exhaust? Mm. It looks like an aftermarket pipe. It's so small and compact. Yeah. It, it looks far better than the old big chunky thing that used to hang off the side. Obviously saves weight as well. In terms of the switch gear, were you pleased with the layout? Yeah, I didn't go through it too much. I'm not real tech savvy with all that sort of stuff. You, I wanted to adjust a few things. You did it for me and that was pretty good. Um, <laughs> bit more technology. Yeah, yeah. I there. love the cruise control. Very easy to operate. No, switch gear layout's fine. I had no problem finding the indicator. It's the big knob that sticks out. Hit that way you go. Indicators are self-cancelling by the way, so you don't need to worry about, are my indicators still on? They will eventually turn off after you've taken that corner or gone around the roundabout, so no problem there. Good thing. You can store your key right in this little glove compartment. But don't leave it there. <laughs> don't forget it. <laughs> don't forget it, because if you walk away and forget it, anyone can walk up, press the button, and they're gone. 
<laughs> so yeah, and the fuel cap too. Mm. That that locks because of the fob as well. Yeah, there's no key. No key. That you got to twist. You just push down up. There you Straight. go. Straight in, and then boop, done. How good's that? Quick Excellent. And easy. Another thing I would recommend uh, for this bike, if you are looking into purchasing one, get a radiator guard. The radiator oh, yeah. is huge and it's quite exposed, so I'd be getting a steel mesh guard for that. Probably the first thing I'd actually yeah. do. Yeah, yeah, it's surprising not too many manufacturers put a uh, radiator guard on as standard. It doesn't take a very big stone to go through your radiator, as you know. <laughs> yeah, past yeah, experience. They go straight through them and that's the end of your radiator. For the cost of a little bit of plastic or, or metal over the front as a, a small grill, you're not going to have that issue. No, definitely not. But to get to know the bike more, I recommend reading your manual, get to know it, go have a day to yourself going through all the electronics and memorising it for yourself because it is quite involved. There's a lot of information that it displays, tells you your tyre pressure, uh, the battery, what condition it's in, uh, how many kilometres you've got left in the tank. By the way, which we didn't mention, this is a 20 litre tank and it's a 4 litre reserve. So you're going to rack up the Ks on here, no problem whatsoever. And so yeah, that pretty much wraps it up with our motorcycle review on the new S1000XR. I'm going to give this bike a 9 out of 10 and I'm pretty fussy when it comes to motorcycle reviews, but this thing really impressed me, it really did. No word of a lie. Um, so yeah, if you are interested in this, in this particular S1000XR Touring Spec, head on over to Team Moto Euro located in Maastricht Slux Creek, Queensland. They have three variant models there. They've got the sports model which has all the carbon fibre spiffy bits, uh, the base model and the Touring Spec. Uh, this model here is selling for 31k. It can be a bit pricey but look got all this tech and all these accessories available ready to go so go and check them out guys definitely throw a leg over this bike your opinion is going to matter the most so it's good that you're watching our video and getting some information off us but with any motorcycle throw a leg over it test out for yourself thanks for watching our video make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification to keep up to date with all of our latest motorcycle reviews we don't only just do the new stuff we do some old bikes as well so make sure to check that out we've also got more product reviews heading your way i think we're at the pace now we're going to be producing a video review once a week now so that's a big step up from what we've been doing head on over to our channel check out other content that we've got there available we've also got the versus se i believe they call it so check that review out um and yeah that's really about it and as always my fellow riders get on your two wheels and free the soul thanks for watching so I got some drone footage of the old man going down the hill here, not very exciting, so I decided to get some landscape, and then got a bit cocky, and yep, straight into a tree. Smart one. So make sure to stay tuned for our part two. We're going to be comparing the S1000XR to the Versys SE, and I think you're going to be very surprised to which bike we preferred. So stay tuned for that one.